Building a C++ project is a genuinely insufferable experience. The core issue is that there's no standard compiler, no standard build system, no standard package manager, and no standard ABI. The result is a deeply fragmented ecosystem, where every piece is incompatible by default, every setup is a bespoke Rube Goldberg machine, and even the simplest task demands an exhausting amount of boilerplate, configuration, and tribal knowledge. Let's discuss compilers first. According to Wikipedia, there are 31 compilers for C++, but the main three are Microsoft Visual C++, which is the default on Windows, GCC, which is the default on Linux, and Clang, which is the default on Mac OS. Each compiler has different pros and cons in regards to its optimization capabilities, features, tools, and extensions. Compiler extensions are non-standard features added by compiler vendors to provide additional functionality beyond what the C++ standard specifies. These extensions can enhance performance, debugging, or platform-specific capabilities. Some examples of this would be pragmas, built-in functions and intrinsics, attributes, inline assembly, and custom keywords and modifiers. But because it's unique to each compiler, it's often recommended not to use them, or to use them sparingly because they reduce portability. And it's why you sometimes see if defines that look like this, scattered across code bases. It's a way to try to use compiler extensions while maintaining as much portability as possible. Compilers also have a different pace at which they implement new C++ features. In the past few years, MSVC has been the leader on implementing the latest C++ features, with the others lagging behind by a significant margin. But it looks like things have changed abruptly this past year, as Microsoft's priorities seem to have shifted, probably to focus on AI or something. And one of their most prominent C++ experts recently left for Citadel. Around the same time, MSVC has started to really lose its momentum. That being said, one of the biggest issues with MSVC has been that it generates a very poor SIMD code in comparison to other compilers, and it has a lot left to be desired in regards to SIMD in general. For example, it doesn't have target attributes to specify which instruction set a particular function should use. The benefit of Clang is that it gives much more friendly errors and warnings compared to the other compilers. It also has excellent tooling, including but not limited to static analysis and formatting. GCC, on the other hand, is the oldest of the three compilers. The main benefit is that it supports a greater number of less popular architectures, but it's slower on Windows than the others. That being said, developers are constantly arguing about which compiler produces the fastest binary. Some devs swear by Clang, but it really depends on your specific use case. Some C++ features are better optimized on certain compilers versus others. If you really care about maximum performance, you'll eventually have to get good at reading assembly, so you can read the output of each compiler to see how well your code is optimized. In general, it's best practice to pick two compilers for your dev environment, because they all give slightly different warnings. This will help you write higher quality code, and using two different compilers will let you know if you're unintentionally using compiler-specific language extensions. But using more than one compiler means you have more stuff to set up and maintain and be knowledgeable about. Compiler flags introduce a whole other layer of complexity that you have to deal with. There are literally hundreds of flags, many with cryptic names that aren't self-explanatory. And different compilers have different flags for the same functionality, as well as different conventions for their flags. Additionally, some optimizations behave differently across compilers. This makes cross-platform development more frustrating. The various optimization levels can also dramatically change program behavior, sometimes introducing subtle bugs that only appear with certain optimization levels but not with others. And the warning system varies between compilers and versions, and it has unintuitive edge cases like how the flag warning all doesn't actually include all warnings. And missing flags like F stack protector or D fortify source can leave your code vulnerable without you realizing it. Managing these flags across different platforms often requires complex build systems. Since C++ doesn't have a standard build system, that's another colossal headache that you have to deal with, because it has led to the proliferation of many different build tools, each with their own syntax, capabilities, and learning curves. On Windows, people typically use MS Build, which comes with Visual Studio. On Mac, people use the Xcode build system that comes with Xcode. And on Linux, developers typically use Make. So what do you do if you're using Windows and your coworker is using Mac? Well, you need to use a meta build system, which generates the correct build system based on the platform. But even at this level, the community is fragmented. Some people use CMake, other people use PreMake or QMake or Mizon or whatever else. And they all have their own unique way of working. There's also meta meta build systems, which generate meta build systems. But thankfully, most devs seem to agree that one level of meta is enough. CMake has become the de facto meta build system for modern open source projects, but developers really hate it. It's a horrible build system that was in the right place in the right time and just happened to gain enough momentum to become widely adopted. It uses a terrible custom scripting language that is neither declarative nor procedural. It also has unusual scoping rules, quirky variable handling, and an inconsistent API. The lack of strict typing and the tendency for variables to expand unpredictably makes debugging difficult. And the error messages are not good. 
It's also evolved significantly over its lifetime, but it maintains backwards compatibility with older, more verbose patterns, so you have multiple ways of doing the same thing. The documentation is awful, and nearly all tutorials are either outdated or focus on trivial examples that fall apart the moment you try to scale them up to a real-world codebase. If you really want to learn CMake, you have to read this 700-page textbook. This is just to learn how to build your application. We're not even at Hello World yet. When you're done reading all that, you'll realize that the library that you want to use is actually configured with Bazel or something. I guess it's time to read another textbook. Keep in mind that CMake is just a build system, not a package manager. Installing and managing third-party dependencies in C++ is another nightmare that you have to deal with.